First of all, thank you for the opportunity to get to present at this event. We're excited to present the results from a really exciting research program we've been working on here at the University of Illinois for about four years. And this project involves extending the reach of our current track geometry data that we collect on a routine basis around the U.S. railway network by adding to it some unique data that we obtain from 3D laser scanning technology that I'll talk about. This work is funded by the Federal Railroad Administration and our project partner is Railmetrics. They're the developer of the technology. As a brief um, outline of today's presentation, I'll provide you a little bit more detail in the context of this presentation, some about our motivation. I'll spend a couple of minutes describing the technology, and then I'll describe to you some of the results that we've obtained with this technology to date and where we're going. So the system that we're using is referred to as the L-Rail system, and this is a 3D laser scanning system that allows us to combine both line scan imagery, camera imagery, and intensity scans, and this allows us to develop these composite images that then we can use AI approaches, specifically deep neural networks, to recognize certain features within images that are associated with track conditions that could be problematic. So we can recognize all the various track components that you see when you happen to drive over a highway rail grade crossing, for instance. And there are a variety of ways that we can report these outputs, but this is a scanning technology that provides inspection data. An example of some of the results from the project are shown here. So you can see that the deep neural networks can, uh, can evaluate the presence or absence of components and outline the size of the ties, determine if the cross ties are skewed and detect a variety of elements associated with the health of the track condition that would be hard if you're a human inspector to capture all of that information in your mind after every inspection run. Again, the mission of this project, we want to evaluate whether or not this technology will allow us to augment existing human inspections by adding this um, AI component to inspections. And there are a variety of different cases that we would like to apply this to. And currently we're working with these industry partners that are shown here, many of our class one railroads to conduct revenue service demonstrations on their track. Since there's a human factors element to this project, we're excited to be able to partner with the Volpe Center to address the human factor elements of how you turn some inspection procedures that are inherently visual and been conducted with human vision, how we start to think about ways Ways that we can support those humans using additional technology like this. There are many project phases to this work. It started out as a proof of concept on Amtrak several years ago. We progressed to the Transportation Technology Center where we train the algorithms, and now we've moved on to some revenue service demonstrations on two Class 1 railroads in the eastern United States and the Midwest and we're working on data analytics. So for the example data that I'm gonna to show today, this is a schematic of an example railroad subdivision that we're working on. The blue, this shows you an example of the data, the blue squares on here indicate that we have concrete cross ties, the red squares, timber cross ties, and we collected dates, we collected data over multiple repeat scans. So one of the things that we can do is just categorize inventory. We can see run over run over run. What does the inventory of track components look like? And in the case of this particular example, we can see that there's a tie replacement program where in this instance, we're actually replacing concrete ties with timber ties. I'll show you a little bit about our big data project and some of the numbers associated with the data set that we've collected to date. Over a million ties, over 1.6 million tie plates, five to six million spikes. These are big data problems. And this is just on one example 100 mile test corridor in the US. So you can see how the objective nature of a system like this and the data it provides can really support existing track geometry uh, inspections. Depending on who at a railroad is the consumer of the data that we're producing is going to dictate the level of specificity in which we report the results. Level one on the data reporting pyramid that we've developed is inventory reporting. It maps to that previous slide that I talked about. How many of each component do we have? Above that, we can start to apply various railroad business rules to determine whether or not the track meets their standards. And then we can think about looking at run over run comparison. Is the track getting better or worse as a function of time and tonnage and maintenance activities? Above that, we're reporting data to upper level executive management. I'll also have a pyramid in the upper left of this presentation to indicate the specificity of the data that I'm showing on a given slide. This slide is an example of some of the inventory data that we've collected regarding number of anchors, 
cross ties and plates. And again, today, I just want to give you a vision of some of the attributes of this technology. We've also been fortunate to come up with some exciting use cases, including trending. So here's an example of data sets from a couple of consecutive runs in 2022 and late 2021. And you can see how the amount of fouled ballast, this is fouled material that says fines in it and how it has grown and changed over this period of time. You can see on the far right, we have greater areas of fouling. So this is just one attribute of, uh, of what this inspection provides. We can trend it. We see that this is probably not an alarming example, but we can see that we are trending toward a more fouled condition. Additionally, one of the things that we've been able to do is look at ballast level. And ballast level is important because it relates to the stability of our track, especially the lateral stability and the ability to mitigate against track buckle derailments due to thermal forces in the rail. And one example here is that you can see at a cross section that's represented by this line, we have a design ballast cross section shown in orange, and then we have a measured profile, which is rep representative of the image up above that shows that we don't have shoulder ballast. So this can provide information to the railroads about how much ballast is needed and what track strength may be associated with a given location. Additionally, we've developed some specific safety thresholds that are associated with FRA regulations and what the literature says about the role of each of these different components within the track structure. And it's exciting because we've allowed ourselves to develop different inspection intervals and be able to highlight locations that the railroad should should conduct very detailed human inspections to check the adequacy of the track. So here's one example. This is a ballast health index, and we've set thresholds for different levels of, um, of severity. Orange and red represent these different business rules that a railroad might have. And we can look at the entirety of a subdivision, maybe 100 miles of track, and we can classify whether the, the ballast is in uh, the green condition, the orange condition, or unfortunately, maybe at times in the red condition. So this is clustering by business rules. The second Second level of the pyramid. We can also use GIS to visualize our data. So look at comparison of different locations and compare locations as a function of time and tonnage, what changes from one run to another. Another way to think about this index is quantitatively. So there's actually an output associated with the ballast health index. And with places where we see that this index is lower, we can go look at what the actual 2D images that come from the laser scanning and line scan camera system. And we can see there is a lack of shoulder ballast in this situation shown by the red, which shows recessed ballast. And this is something that we would know to, to have adequate lateral track strength, we would need to address this. And regarding lateral track strength, Again, this is one of the greatest challenges we have in the rail industry is maintaining our, our longitudinal rail stresses properly and maintaining the stress state of the, of the railroad. And what we have done is we have developed a new track strength index to allow us to quantify those, those longitudinal, um, the resistance to those longitudinal forces. And I'll show you those. They're both longitudinal and lateral, and I'll show you how we do that. The metric involves inputs that come from the L-Rail system and from track geometry. We need track geometry, and that allows us to look at what is the strength of the track. And in locations where we see a dip in the strength of the track, again, we can look at the actual images, and what we'll find is that our metric is telling us that we have low shoulder ballast. It's something that should be remediated, especially at times in which you have high thermal loads high temperatures that could have the rail stress at a state that's significantly greater than the rail neutral temperature at that given location. So this is an example of the shoulder index on this side. We don't have as much ballast, so it's lower. And on this side, we have an adequate ballast section, so we get a 9 out of 10. And in this particular example, we're also in a curve. So not to bore you with the mechanics of track buckles, but if you're in a curve, you have low ballast, and if you have some type of a geometry misalignment with the tracks, that can cause the track to buckle, especially if it has a, this geometry misalignment that's already in the track when we add additional stress to the rails. So one more example here to show you of what changes as a function of time. I said that we can look at run over run comparison. So now we're at the third level of the pyramid and we can take our results and subtract them between two different runs. This is January and June. June of 2022. And we can see that we have locations where we see an increase in track strength. And what this means is that additional ballast was added to a specific area. We can also look at areas here that have lower strength. And the likelihood there is that some type of 
of uh, reduction in ballast height took place. So we have less lateral strength. So this allows us to identify quantitatively what the track strength is, at least using this index, and determine where maintenance should take place to help mitigate the challenge of, uh, of track buckles. So that's just a brief overview of some of the data that we've got and some of the questions that we're answering re related to lateral track strength and track buckles. Going forward, we're gonna continue revenue service testing on two class one railroads. You can see the system shown at the bottom there. And we're going to continue to look at the correlation between the data that we're collecting via this scanning system and traditional track geometry data that tells us about the, the horizontal alignment of the track. And we're going to investigate this question of, of buckle risk and whether we can be part of the solution to mitigate track buckle risk. Again, thanks to the Federal Railroad Administration for sponsoring this work. We're grateful to our partners, Railmetrics, for providing the technology and to our industry partners. This is the entirety of our project team, and I look forward to answering questions with you during the live Q&A.